very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on Ballot 2023. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Well, one thing is sure, the day that we were waiting for, February 25th, has come. Um, but the activities that we were waiting for have not ended. We can't say the elections have come and gone. They have not gone. Yesterday we were expecting some uh, pronouncements from INEC office, the coalition center, and they kept postponing it from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. And from 6 p.m. we now have 11 a.m. today that they promised that they were going to say something. Still, we're monitoring them to see whether there's going to be any activity coming from there, any reaction to the, pe the things that people have complained about and what the people are saying. Uh, but one thing we do know and we're happy about is that the participation in this year's election was very, very impressive. In spite of the fact that we've had pockets of violence here and there and hoodlums doing one or two things that they were not supposed to do. Uh, all we've been saying over the years that uh, you can only rig where you are popular uh, became something of the past right now because in places where people, some people were clearly not popular, uh, a few miscreants went there, disrupted the process and uh, election in those places became something else. But we do hope that at the end of the day, uh, there will be justice in this election. We're not looking for judgments. We're not looking for anything else. We just want justice in these elections. Whoever wins should win, but should win clearly uh, because the people voted for them. And we've seen, we've seen some, some, some upset in a lot of places that uh, has, n has never happened. And like in Lagos, for instance, we've seen where other parties, apart from the ruling party, have won uh, senatorial seats or House of Reps seats, and uh, everybody begins to wonder, is this really it? Is it really happening? Uh, is Nigeria changing? And all that. But, like I said, my name is Nyamgul Agaji, and I do have also uh, Bayo Oloa K with me this morning. Good morning, Bayo. Hello, Bio. Okay. Well, um, while we uh, wait for Bio to join us, I'd like to also uh, inform you, apart from the fact that we are monitoring activities at uh, the INEC Coalition Center, where we'll be having figures reeled out, official figures reeled out, because I'm, I'm saying this because a lot of people, especially the political parties, have seem to have their own situation rooms where they are doling out figures that may not be uh, the same that INEC will be doling out. And at this point, I'd like to tell everybody we should be careful the kind of pronouncements we're making, especially when it has to do with figures and election results. Until INEC says uh, one thing or the other, there is nothing you, you can say that is true enough. Only one umpire that we have in this election. Bayo, good morning and welcome to the program today. Good morning, Yambo. I hope you can hear me now. Yes, uh, I can hear you. Uh, I thought you weren't there at that time. It's been a very long weekend, Bio, and mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I was I was just asking you. Remember, mm -hmm. if you are up to it today, I know how how busy you have been this weekend. How was it anyway? Very interesting. Mm. Um, very very interesting, and um, I guess the. Uh, the whole population in the country uh, were waiting for the results to be announced. Yeah. And um, the, the delay by INEC uh, in doing that uh, created a lot of apprehension, of course. Uh, and well, they, they eventually started. But I, I have been extremely disappointed with INEC, to, to be very honest with you. Um, there are a couple of things I thought we had outgrown those things, uh, even by our own standards. We don't have to compare ourselves with anyone else. Um, security, for example, even if we might say this is not INEX own area uh, of, 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 of responsibility, mm. but we were told by the INEX cha chairman that he, ha he had meetings with the security chiefs, uh, uh, but we still saw even though there were they were pockets, isolated cases of of violence, but the fact that people were injured, you know, makes them unacceptable. 
absolutely unacceptable. In the 21st century, this should not be happening. <clears throat> and if these things happen in urban areas, you can imagine the kind of exposure and risks that our citizens in rural areas could be exposed to. So I honestly feel that uh, in efforts have to be made to ensure that this do not happen. Secondly, it is not enough to arrest people who try to disrupt election and then subject them to corporal punishment, as we saw in some videos, even though we cannot authenticate those videos. But we did see videos where security agents were, were uh, meting out corporal punishment on those who are, uh, who are caught allegedly uh, you know, harassing, intimidating, or attacking either voters or election officials. Mm -hmm. These people should be prosecuted, mm -hmm. not, not just beating them and letting them go. Beating them is wrong to start with. They must be apprehended. They must be prosecuted. And whoever sent them, the investigation must be complete. Whoever has sent them to go and carry out such activities must equally be arrested and prosecuted. We've gone beyond this. This should never be happening in this day and age in this country. And it's totally unacceptable. Yeah, um, I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to play the devil's advocate here right now. Um, when, we, when you talked about uh, being disappointed in INEC, I'm trying to draw a line between INEC and INEC officials. Uh, because clearly we know that some officials have been compromised uh, in one way or the other. Maybe because they've been threatened, like some of them claim, or because they have been tipped uh, with something that have, has enticed them to do something that they are not supposed to do or something. But clearly they have been compromised. But when you talk about your disappointment, is it disappointment in INEC as a body or the staff that allowed themselves to be compromised? They are INEC staff. INEC takes full responsibility. Even See, for their ad hoc staff. They, they, they are INEC staff. Mm. Whether, they are, whether they are ad hoc staff or not. They are INEC staff. They carry identification cards identifying them as INEC staff. And let's, let, let, let me say something. If some candidates become aggrieved, okay, and file cases at the election tribunal, the, 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 those cases and the determination of those cases are going to rest solely on the, probably on the conduct of those election staff. Mm -hmm. So they represent INEC and, they, they, and the roles they play or do not play have a significant impact on the fortune of all the candidates who are participating in the election. Mm -hmm. So to that extent, INEC cannot be absorbed. I mean, we didn't have violence, and you know, I said isolated cases. We didn't have we didn't have violence across. I think largely across the country, elections have been okay, largely, yeah. right? But we have had many many cases, nonetheless, out of one hundred and seventy six thousand plus polling units across the country. Okay, we've had cases, maybe not in up to fifty uh, uh, polling units, right? But still. It's bad enough that people were injured in those places. People were subjected to trauma in those places. Some of them may not even recover from, from, from that trauma for a while. Yeah. And I know what trauma is because I've been in places where people are, are significantly exposed to trauma. So we need to do everything, you know, to ensure that these kinds of things do not happen. And INEC has a responsibility to maintain supervision, supervision over staff that it deploys for elections, whether they are ad hoc staff or permanent staff. Mm. True. Because there's, there's some sort of carelessness on the part of INEC, if you ask me, because, for instance, you find uh, places where ballot papers went without logos of some political parties. Not one location, not two locations, a lot of locations. And then you find places where the Beavers machine was said not to have worked, maybe because of the manipulation of the people involved there. But INEC assured us that everything regarding preparations to the elections were top-notch. They were complete. They had no problem at all. And it got to that point, and we're seeing some lapses that, were, that could have been avoided.
and I see carelessness. But I'm also thinking, in subsequent elections, will it be asking too much if uh, INEC deploy some, deploys something like what we have in the U.S., for instance, with their policemen, where they go around with cameras that will monitor the things that they do so that it will help to, sh to show the conduct of the INEC staff and the people around them. So that if there are pockets of violence, there are issues that they have and complaints are being made, they can also go to those uh, uh, mini cameras that they wear on their bodies. Will that be asking too much? I th I'm just suggesting that couldn't that be one of the things that the INEC ad hoc staff could be carrying around so that whatever happens, they will have their own side of the story to tell? No, Yambul, I think it will be very difficult for staff who have been contracted to conduct elections to also be expected to be recording or monitoring. They, they will not have that time. Uh, they will not have that no, time. Just body cams like think, policemen wear, you know, that's what no, I'm saying. No, no, I, I think that will be still difficult, you know, because the body cam is only, you see, for the police it's easy to deploy body cams because most of the time police officers are standing up. Mm. In the conduct of their work, they are standing up. And so the angle from which the camera records is a fairly reasonable angle to capture things. But when you are sitting down, you are, you are assisting people, you are directing people, you are helping the elderly as most INEC, as INEC staff normally do, yeah. I don't think a body cam will be an idea. But you see, I, I get the point you're trying to make. And I have a simple solution. Given what we saw in some states during this election, mm. What I would advise is that every when most voters arrive at the polling unit, let them start filming everything with their phones. Yeah. Particularly, particularly the entrance into that polling unit, the gate into that polling unit. Let them begin to film everything. And when other people are voting, those that are not voting should keep filming. Mm. Because those films would help. If there are thugs who are who are who are pretending to be voters, film everybody. If they subsequently disrupt or create any problems, you already have the image. And those people can be, this can be given to security agents and it can help them to track or declare those people wanted. Mm -hmm. You know, this can be easily done. And a lot of voters actually filmed incidents, you know, which has helped security agents during this, this last election. But you see, having said that, there are also questions that must be asked. On Saturday, rumors were already going around that the INEX server was down. Mm. Rumors were already flying around, and INEC kept denying it. And then yesterday evening, INEC issues a press statement saying its server was down. But it was not through an act of sabotage, that it was a technical glitch. For me, that is extremely poor and dangerous management of information. Yeah. Because you are going to fuel speculation of being compromised. The moment, how come everybody, the rumors were all over the place on Saturday? The rumors were all over the place. And the rumors were not even palatable because people were saying that the system was hacked. Mm. The public information management of INEC should have immediately responded to that on Saturday, not wait until yesterday evening to now issue a press release confirming that the system was actually down, but it was not through sabotage. This does not help INEC. And that's why I'm saying that I hold INEC responsible for most of what has been happening. They were not proactive in managing information. And then there's, there, was also, there was also the issue of, if the server was down, there was also the issue of, in some polling units, the results of the National Assembly, for instance, could be uploaded to the server. But the presidential election could not be uploaded to the server. Are they having two servers for exactly. the elections? So which exactly. one was down and which one was not down? If this is the same uh, server, at, at what point was it down that they could da uh, upload the results of one of the elections or two of the elections and then that were conducted at the same time? The voting was at the same time. They could upload... Uh, one section of the election, if I will use that one, and couldn't upload the other one. And it gives people 
room to be suspicious that something fishy is happening here. And we keep saying on this program, by you and I, that when people are making pronouncements to the public or for public consumption, they should be careful how they do it. See the time lapse between when the information should have gotten to the people, the confirmation should have been made by INEC, and the time they actually accepted the fact that the server was down, or I don't know whether I will say accepted the fact, but now told us that the server was down. It's, it's exactly. really suspicious, very suspicious if you ask. It is, and, and I mean, INEC, excuse me, INEC obviously has good intentions, but for me, the time lag, like, like you pointed out, <clears throat> the time lag between when this rumor was flying around and when they finally came to admit, it was too wide. Mm -hmm. And you know this election, all the candidates, whether it's Ashwa Du, Balatinumbu, whether it's uh, His Excellency Atik Babubaka, His Excellency Peter Obi, His Excellency Rabbi Kwapanso, they all accept this election is likely to be very close. Mm -hmm. And that makes it tense. It generates a lot of tension, right? And so it's important for INEC to be, not only to be doing the right thing, which I still believe INEC is doing, mm -hmm. but to be perceived to be doing to be the right thing. Mm. To be doing the right thing. Yeah. You know, and when you allow this wide gap in information dissemination or in confirmation of obvious facts, you are unnecessarily fueling speculation. And then you could see that the, the parties, the, the major parties especially, were beginning to claim that they are leading or they are winning, like you said at the top of the program. Mm. Or, or, or their supporters are giving results and sharing things. Be and, and that is not helpful for anyone, you know. So I think that, you know, there's still time to correct this, you know. And, and, and if you notice as well, Yanko, when, um, when the INEC chairman uh, opened the collation center at 12 noon uh, yesterday, he announced, he, he, made, he, he announced the ground rules, you know, how the procedures would go, the processes, and then he also said there's a, there's a media center, so nobody should be expecting that, you know, the media information or blah, blah, blah will happen from the collation center. That was very good, you know. And he said nothing will be done outside of that collation center. You know, in other words, even though he said that they also have their situation room, but everything pertaining to the election will be done, will be announced, will be revealed within the context of that collation center. That was absolutely perfect and spot on. And then he adjourned to reconvene at 6 p.m. Now, at 6 p.m., he did not show. I think he showed up at 6.49 because yeah. I was looking at my time. Yes. He showed up around 6.49. And then they started the so-called collation. And then only a pity state, Rec, was there to announce the result. And after that was done, INEC adjourned till 11 a.m. this morning. Why even allow only a to stay? Why not just delay and let us know you are going to start today? Hmm. And this brings me to the question as to how a state was the only one who could arrive at Buja. Maybe the others were still busy. But the, the reason for, for the National Assembly approving beavers for use is simply because beavers will upload the results, give them the capability to upload the results yeah. directly from the polling units. Mm. Okay? Now, what is all this story, according to Barrister Festus Okoye, the INEC Commissioner for Voter Education, that, you know, the regs, the, 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 the results will go from the polling units yes. to the coalition, to the local government, from the local government to the central coalition center in the state, from the central coalition center once it is finished, the REC will now physically carry the ballots and come to Abuja. In the 21st century, in the yeah, Nigeria it gave, it gave of the me concern as well. I asked that question. There was when, someone at when, the coalition center and I yes, was asking the question. When you already when? have beavers, yeah. when you already have beavers, the REC for each of the 30, 36 states and the FCT can announce the results in their state capitals by video link. Why must they go to Abuja? Beats me. Beats Why me. must they go to Abuja in the 21st century with beavers approved by the National Assembly, accepted by all the parties, and, 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 and you know, disseminated to us, the voters, that this is the process? 
I found that, honestly, I never knew about that until Paris Okoye started announcing, and I was aghast. I was asking I was that same totally question. Aghast. I was asking that same question. Why would it would it need to go to local government, state government? Well, are they transporting it by road? This is something that is electronically transmitted. So if it can be done from the polling booth, why will we need to wait for local government, state government? Who is verifying what? So uh, it, I asked that question, and honestly, the person I asked could not answer me that question. And I'm not sure that even INEC can answer that question satisfactorily because it, it doesn't make any sense to anybody. But yeah, right now, I'm good. it's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, so, sorry, let me, let, me, let me help you a little bit. I'm not answering the question, but let me give you, you a You cannot even answer it, can you? <laughs> yeah, let, uh, I next should answer that then, yeah. but let me give you a perspective. Hmm. I, I assume, and I'm, 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 I, I stand to be corrected, I assume that this procedure existed before the National Assembly approved Beavers. Yes. Now, that, that, I mean, elections, the results can go through that chain at the state level because you have to collect the results anyway, right? But if they've already been transmitted electronically, mm. then it means that at the, they should simply go to the central point where the resident electoral commissioner for the state will announce it because he already has it. It has come to him electronically, right? Mm. Now, and when he is making that announcement, the INEC Central Collection Center in Abuja, where the chairman of INEC, who is the chief returning officer for the presidential election is we see it on video link we see all the wrecks of the 36 states and the FCT on video link yeah and the moment they have finished the result is already on the INEC server anyway then the INEC chairman should simply declare whoever has won this idea of a wreck physically carrying ballots flying to Abuja I think was something that was happening before the National Assembly approved Beavers mm. The moment Vivas was approved, that ought to have changed. Because now we are all waiting for each of the 37 wrecks to fly to Abuja. Or 36, because the wreck for FCT will be in Abuja anyway. And I'm surprised that the wreck for Abuja wasn't even there to announce the result yesterday. Abuja is just there. But Ekiti that has is, no airport was able to get there yesterday. The one from Ekiti that has no airport, no airport got there. Yeah. <laughs> You know, <laughs> so, so and I don't think the, the quantum of voters in Abuja or the you know was such that it was so massive they couldn't have done the compilation. You know, but I mean all these things are to highlight to INEC areas where they need to make amends. Hmm. One recognizes that it is not easy to conduct elections in Nigeria with rainforest, with desert, with with the swamp forest, with rivers, with we know. But INEC had four years to prepare for this election. And yeah. INEC told us when they kick-started the process in February 2022 that they were ready. Now, and the only thing they complained about was money. four weeks, five weeks before the election was security. The yeah. only thing they complained about was security. And thank God, all the, all the parties, presidential candidates, campaigned across Nigeria with little or no security incidents. And the only security incidents we have seen in this election are cases of thugs going to beat up people, not bandits, not kidnappers. Thugs yeah, yeah. who ostensibly might have been unleashed by some, some people. But otherwise, security-wise, everything has been okay. So what excuse does INEC have? And it's also, it's also said funny. that. It's also this, funny this that is, at this time, people will still be snatching ballot boxes. What purpose, what, 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 what does it even achieve? Uh, snatching ballot boxes in an, in an election where the results are supposed to be transmitted electronically. What are they needing the ballot boxes for? Exactly. And because of that, we are hearing yeah. that um, elections in those areas may be cancelled. And if they are cancelled and the beavers is still there, of what use is the beavers if it cannot do the work that will put ballot uh, boxes snatchers out of business? It's, I, I, I'm still trying to understand what is happening, really. True. No, INEC, INEC owes us an explanation. And, and technical, technical glitches can happen, okay? I think our grounds is that 
the period, by, you know, when the, when the technical breach occurred and when an INEC admitted it, the gap was too much. That gap left room for unnecessary speculation that imponed or could impone the integrity of INEC. So INEC need to guard against that, right? And then for the subsequent elections, these things should never repeat themselves. We have absolutely no excuse in this day and age to, 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 to witness the kinds of things that happened in some places on Saturday. But even then, Bayo, God, even then, Bayo, I think they, yeah. they still need to explain to us the technicalities involved in beavers. Because I'm looking at beavers like, okay, I have a phone. I do not have network, but I can still type my text. It will be there. Yes. Maybe I cannot yes. send it, but as soon as there is network, or as soon as I have airtime on my phone, I can now yes. forward that text. I can now send the text. So if these things, Beavers can work without, without the server being on, it will have everything inside it. It's just to upload it that it will be impossible. So why was there that real need that if the servers were down, they couldn't get the kind of information that once the servers come back will still be authentic enough and be uploaded to the server. I just do not understand. They will have no, to explain I, to I, us, um, maybe you have the technical know-how, why Beavers, if the server is not there, Beavers will not be um, a bank, sort of, for all the votes that have been cast. No, no, I don't have, and, and honestly, I think... Um, Maybe IT experts who are familiar with Beavers can. can yes, that's explain. what I'm but, saying. But again, they should have to explain. Because elections, yeah, because elections are already on, I think it's better for INEC itself to explain. Yes. You know, not, for some, not for any other person to do that. Let INEC explain to us how the whole process is supposed to work. Yeah. And more importantly, let INEC also explain to us what exactly was the technical problem that the server had. Mm. Because there are all kinds of statements by different candidates, you know. So, and I don't want to reference any of those because, I mean, with due respect to all the candidates, so it doesn't look like, you know, we are we don't know whether they are being, you know, factual or not, yeah. right? So this is why, yeah, because there, there are all sorts of reasons that were given, you know. But but INEP needs to really explain to us, and then more important, sorry, as equally important is the fact that INEP has to explain to us. Um, what the the, um, the 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 process of uh, uh, of, of uh, sorry the security system of their server? They don't have to tell us what exactly the security is, but they need to tell us is there a backup? Yes. Because if you are going to rely on this for a presidential election, that many people have submitted will be quite close. And we, the, 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 the major candidates themselves admitted it's likely to be quite close. Then you need to let you need to have backup. How can a server go down for a day and a half? Mm. Do you understand? Like they were not prepared so, that there would, there yes, would be such what are kind the security of features? Yes. What are the security features of your server? Don't tell us in detail, but let us know what steps you've taken to ensure that if this server goes down, there's a backup. Remember also, Bio, remember also, Bio, that before the elections, they told us that they may not use or they will not use the regular service providers, the, all the ones that we've been using for our phones and all that, that they had a superior um, uh, kind of internet that they were going to use, a new one that has come up. And up till now, a lot of us do not even know whether they use the regular ones that we have here in the country or they still use that one that is not supposed to have any hitches whatsoever uh, regarding internet connection. I remember that when the elections were going on, people who felt that election must be done seamlessly were even giving their hotspots, their Wi-Fi hotspots, to people, to the um, INEX staff, so that they can upload these results. They didn't have network, they didn't have internet, and all that. People were offering their own. And we do not know, they should tell us if they still use the one that they said they were going to use, or it was the regular one. What gave rise to all these hitches that we found in the elections? And importantly as well, there was a particular place where um, the INEC officers went to, and they said the beavers was not working because they, the code they, impu they, they put into the beavers 
didn't make the beavers open. So someone else had to come with a different code to put into the beavers machine for it to open and for them to use it for the election. Is this even? Is this even so part I, I, of I, the I will take that. Yambu, for me, I will take that with a pinch of salt. Yeah, so, so is know, that something that is supposed person, to happen? Because I yeah, think every I, polling unit should have its own code. So if that was the case, yeah. can that no, I happen? Take, I, I will take that with a pinch of salt. For a non-INEC person to come with a code for INEC, you know, I think INEC should just explain to they us. Should, That's why I said people are saying all sorts of things. And I didn't want to reference it because you never know who is exactly saying what or not. There's, I mean, there could be a technical problem. Mm. It, it can happen. The system can even be hacked. Don't put it past our politicians. Yes. It can happen. But what are the steps? And, and then operating in this environment, given the huge amount of money that Nigerians have paid, because it is, it is what Nigerians have paid that has been used to run this election. Mm. This election is costing Nigerian citizens a lot of money. Yes. So I, I make also an explanation. I make us an explanation. They cannot keep quiet. They owe Nigerian citizens detailed explanation about what is going on. Because the integrity of their job, and many of them have worked very, very hard. Yes. The I integrity agree. of their job is, is, is at stake. So they need to explain, they need to assure the citizens that everything is okay. This is within their control. Not just that press statement that they issue. That press statement says nothing. Hmm. Our press statement says nothing. They need to tell us exactly what has happened. And they need to give a guarantee that it will not repeat itself. Yeah. Okay, let me just remind everybody that we're still monitoring activities from the collation center, INEC collation center, and as soon as there is much activity worth looking at, we will bring uh, it live to you so that uh, we hear what is happening there at the collation center. Maybe they'll start to reel out the results. Maybe they will give us a statement regarding all the complaints that we are making and all that. But it's still ballot 2023. It's not over until it is over, as they usually say. Okay, let me come back to your bio. I see this election as one which will have a lot of litigation. And my fear is whether or not the judiciary can deliver on the kind of justice that we want. We are not looking for swift judgments or swift anything. We're looking for justice. Uh, will the, let me not call Supreme Court, will the judiciary be able to handle what is likely to come out of this election? And, and before I share my thoughts, <laughs> let me also say that there are a lot of INEX staff who resisted intimidation <clears throat> from what we are hearing from, <clears throat> excuse me, from, from voters, you know, people, there are a lot of INEX staff who resisted in, intimidation. There are a lot of INEX staff who are diligent, who are yeah. hardworking, who are patriotic, and we need to let them know we sincerely appreciate their work, okay? Um, the feedback we're sharing is for the INEC generally, especially at the strategic level, to improve. We knew that many INEC staff found it difficult to get to polling units because of restrictions on transport and all that. But they trekked, some of them trekked. They took, you know, so please, we want these INEC staff to know we sincerely and deeply appreciate all of their efforts, in, you know, for the interest of the fatherland. This has to be put on record. Talking about the judiciary, there are two critical arms that are very critical for us as a country, whether we have elections or not. Number one, the judiciary. Number two, the armed forces. Yeah. Under no circumstances must the judiciary or the Nigerian armed forces compromise mm. because the stability of this country depends significantly, largely, on them. Okay? Yeah. And given uh, that we are 62 years old as a nation, or as a country, some will argue we are not yet a nation. We are still on the road to going to become a nation. So the these two are critical. And it is very important that we appeal to the conscience of those who, are in the, who, who, are, who have the honor and the privilege to serve in the judiciary and in the armed forces not to let Nigerians down. Mm. Now, 
Coming to whether the judiciary can, from what we have seen in recent past, you know, many people are a bit worried that when we were having cases that were sporadic and they thought that some of the pronouncements from the judiciary did not, did, did not uh, invoke or elicit confidence on the part of the citizenry. What then happens when you have a deluge of cases, as you have expressed your own personal fears, Yambo, that you foresee the possibility of several litigations? I, I didn't know if you have already become a prophet. <laughs> or you we don't have, need a prophet your, to tell us that. You, you have your own church somewhere. <laughs> but, but of course, we know you know, historically, mm. most of our politicians don't accept election results. True. They always go to court, okay? So um, so we know that if we go by antecedents, people will normally go to court anyway. Even where they've lost clearly, they still go to court. Yeah. But uh, our judiciary is likely, and the election petition tribunals in this case, are likely to receive cases, okay? We're just appealing to them. This will be my response to that question, mm. that they are a critical leg in the stability of this country. And with any judgment that they are going to pronounce, and they are not going to be able to go home and close and sleep and close their eyes, or their wives or their husbands and their children will not be able to move around and raise their heads and say, I am the son or daughter or husband or wife of this person. They should not deliver such a judgment. Okay, I, I hear we're being joined by Femi Aderi Bigbe. Um, he's here with us. Femi, good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning and thanks for the opportunity of having me join. Okay, the elections, we've just conducted the elections and today we're expecting INEC to, uh, to address us and all that. And the issue at hand, we're talking about me and uh, Bio, my colleague here, is... Um, okay, he was trying to call me a, a, a prophet, but we don't need a prophet to tell us that we are likely to have a lot of litigation as the outcome of these elections. And we were just wondering if our judiciary, from all that we have seen them be, leading up to this election, that will, they will have the capacity to do what they need to do uh, to address the litigations that will come out of this election. Do we trust our judiciary enough to make sure that since they are the last hope of the common man, that the common man is going to have justice where justice uh, is needed. All right, uh, thank you. That's a very interesting question. I mean, I would have preferred to come from education and go, uh, but uh, since I'm, I've been asked, and this is this is uh, I'm in Nigeria, and so yes. I have to. Speak Ask. I we'll mean, we'll I still go to the education, but just let's talk about this. So, uh, um, I'll start by saying that there is a huge depletion in terms of trust uh, in the nation at the moment. Uh, and I do hope that um, relevant agencies of the government or perhaps of the government uh, do something about that to address the issue of trust. Uh, so if you ask me that uh, do we uh, citizens trust, uh, you know, whether there is going to be um, a, a, some, some believable or uh, process from the, from the judiciary, I think in the past we've had uh, some, some dash of brilliance from the judiciary. Um, so it may be, it may be wrong to, to emphatically say uh, that um, there is no hope uh, with regards to uh, the expectation of Nigeria uh, 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 from the ju judiciary. I, it, in fact, it's the last hope of, of Nigerians uh, at the moment. Um, so we will keep expecting that um, whatever wrong has been spotted and based on um, technical uh, case, uh, uh, case by case and facts that will be brought in front uh, of the court, it will be dealt uh, each of those cases will be dealt with, uh, you know, on the merit of of, of those cases. And um, so I want to strongly say that um, Nigerians believe in court process. Yes, there has been a few cases in the past where um, 
people think on, on base of uh, emotions and that uh, 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 judgment panthers away from a public uh, outcry. Um, I mean, but I, I'm not a legal expert, but I also know that uh, law it, it's a matter of technicalities and and law, so it it doesn't pander to emotion. So, um, so, but we're, we're going to as Nigerians keep remaining positive and hope that uh, whatever gaps has been um, identified or cases that will be brought against uh, the elections will be will be handled by cause uh, by the courts of the land uh, on its merit. Okay, we were excited that we were going to talk with you on education today because um, a lot of the things that are going on in Nigeria, they have, uh, people have uh, tied them to the level of education, the kind of education that we're having in Nigeria. And we're, we're looking at reinventing the educational system in Nigeria such that we can have a better citizenry, uh, patriotism, um, entrepreneurship mi minded entrepreneurship minded people uh, we can have a, a new crop of people that will make Nigeria greater than it is today I mean uh, you cannot expect an educated person I'm talking about real education not just someone who has acquired some papers but educated person to be the one snatching ballot boxes for instance to be the one uh, allowing themselves to be used as talks to be the one that thinks that the only way to be in the political scene is to be a thought to someone else and all that. What are we missing in our educational system that could have translated into having a better citizenry that will have something or a society that is civil, a society that is understanding, a society that does the right thing, a society that has conscience, a society that is patriotic enough to build its own country. What do we need to do to reinvent our educational system, Femi? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very, very much for, for that question. I think it's a very interesting one. And I'm going to um, just create some context about what we've done in that in that regards. Um, so uh, it's no story that, you know, those who uh, held Nigeria captive first dealt or brought education to its nil in Nigeria. And I would I would limit my, my intervention uh, to the work that I have done in Nigeria based on, I mean, looking at uh, basic and second, senior secondary education. And if you look at the indices and the data that we have in that space, you see that um, it, it's difficult to say that children are learning in Nigeria. And you can see the impact in different ramifications. You see uh, the quality of those who are turning out in, in primary school. You see the amount of children that are out of school in Nigeria. You see the quality of, uh, uh, of those that we are turning out in senior secondary school. Look at how many children uh, can have good com conversations. And you can directly link it to violence. Um, you know, I was doing a study over the weekend to look at um, the background reason to why human resort to violence uh, when we are unable to communicate our point and are able to 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 uh, to have meaningful conversation. Uh, so, if you look at the quality of those who are turning out, even as our leaders, look at the quality of those who are turning out, even at at uh, at tertiary uh, tertiary institutions, then you. Look at that the background we've had a challenge with the background, and that's from education. And until we're able to do that, so if we want to fix elections, we want to stop violence, we want to address issues of security, we will re really need to go back to the basis to look to look at fixing basic education. And permit me to quickly come in from, from this angle that. Um, in, in looking ahead of this, ahead of the election, there is something that um, a group of civil society uh, did in Nigeria, and that, that is basically for education. Looking at the manifestos of political candidates in Nigeria, and uh, we took our time to look at the quality of those manifestos and commitment for education. In Nigeria, we have a history of politicians promising free education. 
and rolling out even if they're going to even if they're not going to meet up with those promises they make those promises but there's something very very wrong fundamentally that happened this 2023 election that those promises were bogus and very minimal in terms of specifics in terms of addressing the gaps in terms of addressing the gender sensitive gap gaps that we have around education they're very very minimal and because we see that politicians did not make these promises civil societies came together to look at the sector uh, uh, the basic and secondary education to look at the sector what are the gaps what are the things okay that uh, ne are needed a, to be done moment, if we're going to be imagine education just a moment fermi would like to keep you for a, a longer period to talk with you in fact i have my colleague uh, bio who is also standing by to ask you questions about how we can revamp our educational system and all that so that we don't see the kind of things that we are seeing now among our youths that should be in school and should learn something for themselves and how to make our country greater we'll take a break for the news and we're hoping that on the other side which is about 10 minutes from now or 15 minutes from now we can reconnect with you and talk more about how we can revamp this educational system uh, before we let you go. Uh, we hope that you will be there uh, for us at that time. Please, Femi, don't go away. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's still Ballot 2023, and we are still hoping that uh, INEC will eventually address us as a nation and also give us the authentic results from the Collation Center. Uh, we're expecting that to come up any moment. We were told yesterday it was going to be at 11 a.m., but um, this is the longest 11 a.m. It's already almost 12 o'clock. So we'll take a break for the news, and right after that, we continue with the Ballot 2023. Stay with us. Thank you.